not very often that a city and team is perfectly matched with a player. It's rare when that player's characteristics, which define him down to his very core, align with the fans' own way of life. The Buffalo Bills in Buffalo, New York have suffered for 25 years without a division title or even a single playoff win, but yet have some of the most diehard fans in the entire league, Bills Mafia. Through the pain of failure, their fiery passion has only burned stronger. Their perseverance through one of the darkest playoff droughts in NFL history is symbolic of their faith, their belief, and signifies that they are tough people. All Bills Mafia needed was someone to represent their long-held hope, someone to lead them to where they deserve to go. Then, in 2018, the Bills drafted Josh Allen. He was their savior, but that's not quite how it began. When he started out, he was not a great or even average quarterback. He struggled in his first two seasons and needed time to develop. Just like how the Mafia needed him, Allen needed them, and they had his back. This city believes in their players no matter what, which is exactly what Allen needed as he slowly improved. Just like the fans, he has perseverance, he has worked his ass off, and he is tough as hell. He's a symbol of the same passion and tenacity of Buffalo, and now in 2020, all of his hard work and faith in himself have more than paid off. He's thrown for 4,500 yards and 37 touchdowns, which are both top five. He's rushed for another eight, he's led the Bills to their first division title in decades, and they're peaking at the perfect time. Since week 10, they've won every game by double digits and have outscored opponents 229 to 110. Allen has full-blown broken out in his third season, so the question is, which areas has he improved that have led to his shocking success? There are many flaws he struggled with early on that he's worked hard to fix. His mechanics were great, and his accuracy was far below average. But today I want to focus on one critical area where he's gone from one of the worst in the game to one of the best. His dramatic improvement when pressured while inside the pocket. He's always had incredible scrambling ability to turn a dead play into a big game. But while it can be a blessing to run and make plays others can't, it can also be a curse by impeding his long-term development to decipher coverages and find open receivers within the structure of the play call. In his first year, Allen's sack rate when pressured inside the pocket was 37th in the league. Then last year, it was 39th. This season, it's third best. Compared with 2019, also when pressured in the pocket, his yards per attempt has jumped up more than a yard and a half, and his completion percentage has improved 13 points. Allen's shown this year that he can get through his reads while pressure closes in, and still makes big plays sitting within the pocket while avoiding sacks. Take this example against the Patriots, with the Bills winning 10-9 in the second quarter. It's 4th and 2 and a crucial turning point in the game. Bill Belichick's game plan against Allen and the Bills was to condense their coverages inside to get Allen to throw outside the numbers while rushing just three or four to make him hold the ball to try and force a mistake. The Patriots show like their all-out zero blitzing and man coverage, but are actually disguising a cover three zone match defense. That concept, with their condensed coverage, is the perfect call against the Bills play, which is mesh with a dig behind it that has the option to sit in any open windows in zone. Typically, Mesh can pull these hook defenders out of position and free one of the shallow crosses for an easy gain. But since the Pats condense this curl flat defender inside, who would typically drop deeper and along the numbers, he can play Cole Beasley shallow, the strong hook linebacker can play Stephon Diggs, and the weak hook backer can get depth to take away the dig route that teams love to pair with Mesh. Allen can't just throw to his first or second read, but has to hold the ball with pressure closing in and squeeze a throw into a crazy tight, basically non-existent window. In the past, he probably would have seen his first read covered and tried to pick up the two yards with his legs, which he's really good at. And he still does do that, but this year, he's trusting his ability to make those plays from inside the pocket. He still has to make sure the Pats aren't zero blitzing, 
Since there's no safety in the middle of the field, they could be bringing six, and all he has is five linemen. Right at the snap, he checks the mic in the free safety and sees they're dropping into zone. Then double checks the will and confirms he's dropping into zone. So his eyes snap to Diggs to see if he can quickly hit him over the middle, then to Beasley to see if he has space to settle down. Against zone coverage, if the shallows are covered up, that usually means the dig has a good chance of slipping in behind. But since the Pats staggered their linebackers in coverage, Therese Hall is sitting right where Knox is headed. You can see Allen almost throws to him because he thinks he's going to sit down in the open zone window. But Knox continues to try and get behind Hall all while the pressure closes in. Allen makes a flat out insane throw. And look at the anticipation when he releases. It's way before Knox is behind Hall. With Lyman bearing down, Hall in the window, and the safety driving down over the top, Allen still throws a missile. He's been pressured the third most of any quarterback this year, so his growth and maturity with the pass rush in his face has been critical to his success. Instead of escaping with his legs late in the down, he has stayed cool, calm, and collected. Later in the same quarter, the Bills actually kind of troll the Patriots by calling one of the plays they've dominated with for years, the counter-hot play-action pass. Since linebackers usually key guards for their runner pass cues, this play pulls a guard like it's a run to give the second-level false keys to open up the slant behind them. Back in the Brady days, the Patriots repeatedly ran Gronk on this route behind the sucked up linebackers, and that's exactly what the Bills were counting on the Pats to anticipate. The Bills want the home run ball here. They want Devin McCourty to think he's recognizing the same play he'd gone up against in practice for years and bite on the quick slant, so Allen can pump the slant and throw the post up top. Wherever McCourty goes, Allen throws away from him. But since McCourty does a fantastic job not nailing down on digs, Allen has to hold the ball while this protection isn't really designed to sustain for this long. He knows he's laid in the down, and he can't just throw the slant in case a low hole defender drops off the line out of nowhere, which Kyle Duggar does. Allen sits in the pocket strong with defenders flying towards him, and without flinching throws a perfect pass to Diggs who has nobody anywhere near him. It's the small little details that we're now seeing that weren't there before. Look at this tiny step Allen takes as he feels the D-tackle charging. He stays perfectly calm while the pocket constricts and buys just enough time to deliver the pass. We didn't see these nuanced movements inside the pocket, but now for Allen, it's second nature. He's made gigantic strides in his development, and the Bills coaching staff, especially offensive coordinator Brian Dable, have been outstanding. So many things the Bills have done have aided Allen's rise to greatness, but it's the subtle intricacies within a play design paired with Allen's improvements that have helped him in the offense explode. On this play, the Broncos are running a five-man fire zone blitz, with what's essentially cover three zone behind it. But since it's a blitz, the cover three rules are a little bit different. Knowing that defenses count each receiver from the outside in, fire zone blitzes assign the corner to number one, the safety to two, and the linebacker to three. Dable and the Bills know this, so they call their indie concept, which is 2D post with a deep cross from the backside. Typically against play action, the linebacker Josie Jewell turns around and runs with the cross, but he's stressed by his number three assignment, the running back, who could release underneath him. With the blitz closing in on Allen, he still has to make sure Jewell doesn't run with the tight end and by doing so gets wrecked. Look at all the ways the concept stresses Jewel by pulling him in different directions. It's play action, so he has to fill the A-gap if it's a run. Then he has to determine if this number three assignment is going outside, while Dawson Knox, who ends up the new number three, sneaks in behind him. The concept is great, but it's not exactly an easy play for Allen. The Broncos are running a TE stunt with Bradley Chubb coming from off the screen, which doesn't get picked up by the left guard. So by the time Allen flips around, he has Chubb sprinting at him untouched. He knows he's gonna get obliterated, but if he throws now, Jewel could still flip around. So he stands in, gets friggin' smoked, and does what's necessary to make the play. Dable has consistently proven that he's an excellent offensive mind and can identify specific matchups or flaws in a defense's coverage during the game. He abused one of the league's best linebackers, Fred Warner, and continued setting him up as the game went on. 
They start off with a dagger concept paired with an arrow route to pull the curl flat defender, which also keeps Warner from dropping too far into the dagger window, and he just barely misses tipping a disgusting throw from Allen. Then the next quarter, they align Diggs, Beasley, and Knox in the same positions on the other side and use the same concept. Except, knowing Warner is waiting on the dagger route, they run dagger stop. So with Warner all geared up for the end cut, Allen throws the stop route in front of him and behind the curl flat defender. Then the quarter after that, so now in the fourth, they use the same Diggs, Beasley, Knox alignment and again run dagger stop. Warner still slightly overplays the dagger as well as Beasley running deep, and this time Allen knows where the window will be since it kept working and anticipates well before Warner could have made a play even if he knew it was coming. What Allen is doing in his third year with the Bills is astounding. Many people wrote him off as a bust heading into 2020, but when he needed people to believe in him, Bills Mafia gave him that belief as he continued to work his ass off. His improvement in the pocket is symbolic of the way he's improved as a QB, and is also symbolic of the patient, tough, and hardworking city that he plays for. The Mafia knew there was a special player inside of Allen, but he just needed the time to develop, to be unlocked and unleashed on the NFL. They've given him their hearts, and in return, he's given them something the Bills haven't had in a long, long time. A chance. Buffalo is red scorching hot as they head into the playoffs. They tasted bitter defeat a season ago, but this is not that same team. They have a new Josh Allen who's now one of the best QBs in the league. 25 years later, the Bills are back, and this time, their hero is ready.